Good morning students. Today we will be doing this poem The Snake Trying by W. W. E. Ross. Before I start the explanation of this poem, I'll just give a brief introduction of the poet. William Wrighton Ross was born on June 14, 1894 and died at the age of 72 on 26th August 1966. He was a Canadian geophysicist and poet. He was the first poet to write images poetry and surrealist verse. For that reason, he was called the first modern Canadian poet. His notable works are Irrealities, Sonnets, Lacunics. In this poem, he has used visual imagery which helps us to form mental pictures in our mind while reading this poem. What is the theme of this poem? This poem is based on the theme of prevention of cruelty towards animal. The poet develops this thought by requesting people to maintain ecological balance and not to harm any species. In this particular case, he is talking about snakes. They have a right to existence too. It's a short poem which is written in free verse. This is a type of a poetry that doesn't contain rhyme or rhythm. It's an open form of poetry that tends to follow natural speech patterns. The first stanza, I'm just going to read it out. The snake trying to escape the pursuing stick with sudden curvings of thin long body. How beautiful and graceful are his shapes. So here in the first stanza, the poet says that a snake is trying to escape himself from the man who's trying to catch him with the stick. When he crawls, his long body curves and twists. The poet describes his movement very graceful and elegant. His body looks fascinating when he moves. So the poet's mood is that of fear as he sees the man pursue the snake with a stick. The poet is completely awestruck and fascinated by the snake's beauty and graceful movement. His tone is full of admiration for this beautiful creature of nature. The second stanza, he glides through the water away from the stroke. Oh, let him go over the water into the reeds to hide without hurt. Small and green, he is harmless even to children. So here in the second stanza, the poet takes on a pleading tone as he begs the man to let the snake go because it's harmless. The poet says the snake moves through the water to save itself. It moves smoothly without making any noise. And he's requesting the man to let him escape through the water and let him hide behind the reed, those grasses which can camouflage him. The green snake is harmless. He will not hurt anyone, not even to the children. Third stanza, along the sand he lay until observed and chased away. And now he vanishes away and the ripples among the green sim reeds. So in the last stanza, the poet say the snake was lying on the sand until it was observed and then chased away by a man holding a stick in his hand. In order to save himself, he disappears in the water and camouflages himself in the green bushes of those marshy plants which you find uh, near a river or a pond. As he thinks of a man attacking the snake, his mind is filled with regret at man's cruelty. In the third stanza, means the snake is not saying anything to the man. Still, the man is chasing him with a stick and he's just trying to hide away in order to escape from that hit. Now I'll be discussing the literary devices which are used in this poem. Personification, it means when we give human qualities, characteristics or attributes to an object, animal or an idea. 
so here the poet refers to snake as he would refer to a human being so the snake has been personified in this poem we can use we can make out from the words which are used here he glides through water or oh, let him go this word him he otherwise for animals we use it but here the snake has been personified so the pronoun he him is used for the snake he glides through the water away he vanishes away in the ripples so the snake has been personified in this poem transfer epithet first of all what does this epithet word mean it means it's an adjective which describes the main quality of someone or something transferred epithet it refers to to describe one thing which is transferred to some other thing in a line so here this pursuing stick pursuing stick it is actually not the stick which is pursuing it's the man so from man it has been transferred to the stick so that's why it is called transferred epithet in order to give that poetic effect pursuing refers to the person who is holding the stick not the stick itself imagery it produces picture in the mind of people while reading or listening so here we are able to create those mental images in our mind when we are reading some poem the such words are used so here the snake trying to escape the pursuing stick all these things we are able to visualize with our eyes the way the poet has described the way he has used those words with sudden curvings of thin long body movement and now he vanishes in the ripples we can actually visualize with our eyes the rippling effect of water those slim reeds which you will find next to a pond or a river it creates those visual images in our mind alliteration it is the repetition of the consonant sound within the closely related word in a line so in this case he is harmless this ha sound has been repeated in order to create that effect so what is the message of this poem this poem is about a green color snake who's trying to hide himself in green bushes the message the poet wants to convey through this poem is that not snakes that are dangerous but humans that are dangerous to snake the snake attack only when they see the danger so here also you see the snake was lying peacefully was not troubling or disturbing anybody as soon as that man saw the snake he just want to chase him away not just to chase him away but to kill him that's the first reaction which human have that is what the poet is saying here not all snakes are poisonous here the snake itself is a victim that's it for today's class children have a great day